Uh, our lecture today is uh, dedicated to convex functions and sets. Uh, very important notion in uh, optimization theory and uh, algorithms. Okay, let's start with convex sets. Here I draw some examples. This is convex set. And this set is non-convex. And those two sets together as one set uh, uh, is also non-convex set. How can I say it formally? Suppose uh, I take arbitrary points x and y inside convex set. Then for any pair of points, for any pair of points, the straight line between them, interval of straight line between them, also be should belong to this set. Then the set is convex. How can we see that this set, for example, is non-convex? I can uh, choose, for example, such x and y, then connecting line, not uh, not all will belong to the set and the similar thing here x and y uh, so how can i write it uh, in algebraic way uh, uh, con uh, set c Set C is convex if uh, for any x and y belonging to C the interval, how can I express it? I will write in the following way alpha x plus uh, oh, sorry. 1 minus alpha y should uh, also belong to C but uh, not for any alpha in order to be in between uh, those two points uh, alpha should be 0 less equal alpha or even less alpha less 1 And uh, okay. And the next is notion of convex function. Again, I start with picture. This is a plot of convex function. This is also convex. Convex. And this is non-convex. How can I formally distinguish between the, those two cases? The answer is the following. If I take uh, two arbitrary points on the uh, area of arguments, for example, uh, okay, let's call them x and y, x and y, and uh, what I will do, I will draw linear function, I will take a linear function which values in x and y uh, are the same as values of my f. And I will check whether this linear function is all above uh, the plot of my original function. And I see that for convex functions it is satisfied also for this one. Above mean uh, greater or equal. 
for example here if I will take x and y then uh, linear function will align with my function but again it's greater or equal it will be satisfied and here I uh, can find such x and y that linear function is uh, not above and not below it's somewhere uh, with respect to my function so, uh, so I can write the following definition convex function um, convex is how can I say same in following way a function Uh, with uh, quantum call, uh, first of all with convex domain the function with convex domain is convex if for uh, any x and y how can I write this, uh, this linear, mm, linear function? First, uh, first of all, uh, f in the, in, uh, in the it, it intermediate point. f, uh, f uh, alpha x plus uh, 1 minus alpha y you see th this is a point in between of those two points uh, like in definition of convex set and uh, I say that uh, my f in, in some point in between should be less than linear function uh, and linear function less or equal I can express as a alpha f of x Plus uh, one minus alpha f of y. One minus alpha f of y. Uh, for zero less alpha less one. And. Uh, also, important notion of strictly convex function. Uh, it will mean that the linear function is strictly above. This uh, inequality is strict. For example, so this is strictly convex and this is not strictly convex because uh, there are intervals where linear function is aligned with my function. Uh, okay. Uh, strictly convex when uh, inequality is strict And, uh, and uh, also important notion of concave function, this function which looks in this way. Uh, so definition is uh, very simple. Uh, minus f. is convex uh, now we can consider some properties of convex sets and then convex functions 
So let's start with convex sets. <coughs> if I have several convex sets, then I may conclude something about other sets which are related to them. For example, intersection of several convex sets is convex. I can draw a picture. For example, I have set 1 and set 2 and set 3 and uh, if those three sets are convex then the intersection is also convex set. Uh, sum of convex sets is convex. What is sum of two sets is uh, a new set which uh, includes uh, sum of all uh, pairs of points where one point is from one set and uh, another is from other set. I, I, I can draw an example because th this notion may be not very usual for you. Uh, let's see what will be sum of uh, some uh, uh, okay let first set be, be this small uh, circle and uh, the second set will be this large one what uh, will be the sum what will be the sum uh, I should uh, take any point uh, on the large circle and uh, add, uh, add uh, some uh, vectors from here. In this case, in this way, I, I, I will get this set of points. Yes? Set of points around uh, any around any point of large circle. What set finally I, I, I will get? Finally, I will get such kind of set, a large set. And this is uh, if it was S1 and this was S2, this large will be S1 plus S2. And uh, the claim is that uh, this sum is a convex set. And uh, just in a minute, we, we will show a constructive way to prove these properties. Okay, now, if, if I have some linear map, uh, and say A is matrix and the X are from convex sets. Uh, so it's like I map all points of my set by a matrix. Then the resulting set should be also co uh, convex. And uh, level sets of convex function. If 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 I have a convex function like like uh, plot uh, level lines of geographic map, uh, then uh, of course uh, this they will look in this way. Mm. For example, I have a function of two variables x1 and x2. And what is level set? It's uh, everything inside of level line. You see here is in, 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 inequality. For example, one level set is all those points. <coughs> and uh, of course uh, this is a convex set. And uh, I, 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 I just will show you example of such of a proof of such properties, uh, for example, on, on property one, it just follows from a definition of convex sets. Uh, so let me write here example of proof one. property one. Okay, so what uh, 
what is my definition? I, I, I should check uh, if uh, there are two points x and y. Let me remove it a bit. Uh, x and y, x and y, which uh, belong to this intersection of all sets, then uh, interval of straight line between them also must belong to this intersection. Uh, I first say in in words, if uh, x belongs to intersection, then it belongs to every every set. Uh, and the same y belongs to every set. Um, okay. So if uh, x uh, and y belong to set C1, for example, then uh, alpha x plus uh, 1 minus alpha y should also belong to C1 because C1 uh, is convex. Uh, and the same I can say x, uh, y belongs to C2, then alpha x plus 1 minus alpha y belongs to C2, so on. Uh, but uh, x and y belongs to intersection. It belongs to all sets. It belongs to intersection, then it belongs to all sets. And we can conclude that this intermediate point be belongs to C1, C2, and so on. And from this, I conclude that uh, alpha x alpha x plus uh, 1 minus alpha y belongs to intersection ci. Okay, th this is clear. This point in between for some particular alpha. I choose some particular alpha. Uh, I forgot to write here. Uh, 0 less than equal alpha less than equal 1. I can choose some particular alpha, then uh, this point, which is linear combination of those two, belongs to C1, C2, and so on. Uh, if it belongs to every set, then it, of course it belongs to intersection. And uh, by this uh, I prove this property. Sorry, this property. This uh, intersection is convex. Again, I took uh, two pairs from from intersection x y belongs to intersection c i then I conclude then x y belongs to every set then the convex combination belongs to every set uh, and then uh, the convex combination belongs to, to intersection it's a very simple idea of proof and you can continue with similar technique for those uh, remaining properties and this I leave for your home consideration. Now we consider uh, some properties of convex functions. Uh, first of all, if I have a convex function of several variables and uh, I stay at some particular point x and move in direction r, it's uh, difficult to draw this um, picture. I will only draw this symbolically. Uh, so I have this line and I can consider a function of this uh, one variable of shift along this line and uh, 
Somehow it will be a convex function. I am not sure that I am able to do this uh, successful uh, plot. But uh, formally, formally it looks in the following way. If, you, if, if I have a convex function of several variables, then uh, I uh, build such a function phi of alpha f of x plus alpha r x is vector r vector of direction <coughs> then this function is convex and uh, vice versa if uh, in any direction this can uh, one dimensional functions are convex then uh, my original function is is convex and uh, you can uh, you can prove it at home, just take definition of convex function. Uh, another very basic and important property: uh, weighted sum of convex function is weighted for non-negative weights. Put a, put attention that if uh, f uh, convex, then uh, alpha f. Uh, if alpha is negative, alpha f is, is not convex, is uh, concave. So we need really alpha and beta greater or equal to zero. And uh, the third property is the uh, maximum of two convex functions. Uh, how can I draw a picture? Let uh, me draw one dimensional example. Here is my x. And uh, here, for example, I have f of x. This is f. And uh, here I have g of x, g. So I have two convex functions. Uh, what is maximum of uh, two functions? Uh, I take maximum point wise. So for every x I choose maximal value. And uh, I just will draw it by red. This is my maximum function. This is max uh, f and g. And uh, you can see from the pictures that this is a convex function in our example. Uh, you, you should also mention that uh, even if f and g are smooth, uh, this maximum function have, uh, has a point of non-differentiability, but nevertheless it's not smooth, but convex function. And uh, all three of those I suggest you to prove uh, at home. So it's for home consideration. And also, a uh, very important uh, example if we have a chain combination of functions. For example, I have a this is number four. Um, I have a scalar function h from r to r, and uh, I will need that this h will be monotone increasing. and uh, also convex and uh, I have a function of uh, many of n variables f uh, rn uh, to r rn to r just convex in this case 
it follows that uh, my function, combined function h of f of x is also convex. And uh, again, put attention that uh, h is not only convex but also monotone increasing. Why do I need this? If 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 uh, I would not have this uh, property, I can uh, choose h be just linear function. I I can uh, take h of one variable of t is equal minus t and uh, in this case uh, what would I have? Uh, I, I would have uh, minus f of x so h of f h of f would be just minus f and uh, of course I know that minus f is not convex function. So I really uh, need this property monotone increasing and uh, this, uh, this will be also part of your homework. Another important notion of uh, convex analysis is the notion of extended convex function. So, what does it mean? Normally, convex functions are defined over set and uh, being defined over convex set is the uh, uh, important part of definition of convex function. Convex function is a function with convex domain. And uh, what we will do, I, I, I will start uh, just on the picture and then we'll continue formally. We will say, I will build, uh, so for example, I had standard function f, and I will extend, I, I say that uh, I have another function which I don't care about definition of the domain, I just uh, define it as being infinity where uh, f uh, where uh, points are out of domain c and this is formal definition if we have uh, if we have convex set and function defined convex function defined over the set then extended fun function is uh, just as our original one inside set and uh, infinity outside uh, this notion is very useful when you manipulate with functions and uh, don't like to write always uh, the domains. Just forget about domains and think about function which is defined everywhere. You just want uh, to manipulate right uh, with uh, values of infinity in the way like uh, infinity plus infinity is infinity and uh, infinity multiplied by some finite constant is infinity and so on. Be careful not to get to the um, situations where you have infinity multiplied by zero, which is not so well defined. And I, I, I will just give you an example. Uh, we can define uh, extended convex function as a function which uh, satisfies this usual uh, inequality for alpha between uh, 0 and 1 uh, and, and we don't say that uh, domain must be convex and uh, let me give you an example uh, suppose that we really have uh, function which is looks which looks like convex but is defined on non-convex domain for example this is uh, my domain c it uh, contains two parts 
and my function f is defined in this way. It's like it was convex, but it is not defined outside. So, uh, if I would try just this uh, inequality without extended function, so everywhere in the, in the domain it will be satisfied. I would think that my function is convex. But this function is not convex, because it doesn't have convex domain. How extended function will, 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 will look? It will be just infinity here. Infinity here and also infinity on the left and on the right. And now if I check uh, I take two points in the domain of my function and connect them by straight line. So I consider linear function and uh, I see that this linear function is not everywhere great or equal to my original function. Here it's less. So this definition works and it doesn't require uh, definition of domain of part of it. Another important uh, notion epigraph of a function. Uh, what is the epigraph? Uh, just let me start from a picture. Uh, suppose I, I, I have a function which is defined over domain C and I have a plot of uh, a function then uh, all the area above the plot is the uh, epigraph this is AP of F all this area so if uh, I like to write it formally. I have a set and function from set to R and uh, APF. Uh, if, um, by the way, uh, put it, uh, pay attention that F if is defined over Rn, then APF belongs to the uh, space uh, of uh, dimensionality one more, Rn plus one. So it's a set of all pairs x, y, so that x in C and y is a real number which is uh, greater or equal of f of x. And uh, important property of epigraph is that if f is a convex function, defined of course over convex set, then uh, epigraph is a convex set. So property uh, let C convex set and uh, F convex function uh, of thy Actually, it, 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 it works in uh, two directions, uh, if and only if. Uh, epigraph of F Sorry. also I leave for your homework. Uh, one more notion is a convex combination of set of points. When we define the convex set and convex uh, functions, we used uh, convex combination of two points. We, we use a, 
uh, interval of uh, straight line connecting those two points. Now we generalize this notion. So if we have a set of points in Rn, then uh, convex combination of those points is just weighted sum with uh, coefficients greater or equal to zero and sum of coefficients is one. Uh, again, uh, when we had uh, only two points, it was uh, alpha x plus one, 1 minus alpha y, it was a particular case of this definition. Uh, and here is a picture. If, if uh, here I have five points from x1 to x5, then one can show the very interesting property why it's called convex combination that uh, this point y will be inside of convex set defined by those uh, by extreme points you see that uh, actually point x5 is somehow inside it doesn't influence the area where y can be located and uh, this is uh, this brings us to the definition what is convex how it's set of all convex combinations of uh, our points so we, we have m points and consider set of all convex combinations and uh, this actually this area is a convex hull and uh, there is an uh, alternate um, alternative definition of convex hull is uh, just a minimal convex set containing all our points and uh, you can try try to look on it more carefully uh, just uh, how one can go uh, look on this uh, convex combination you can start uh, considering uh, the first two points and we, we already know that the convex combination is uh, on the straight line on the interval of straight line between them and then if you consider convex combination of this point with uh, any other new point you will get something be, be belonging to this new new interval and if you consider all uh, possible such interval you you will uh, find that uh, you cover all this area inside so and if you take any point from this area inside and uh, add uh, one more point you will actually discover that you covered all this area which i already drew this is a geometric idea how can uh, how can one explore uh, this def de definition and show really that this uh, set of the, all this combination is convex set and then show that it's minimal convex set which uh, includes all, all the points now we are ready to get uh, a very important formula of convex analysis Jensen inequality uh, what does it say in short? If I have a, a number of points and uh, take the convex combination, then function value of this convex com combination will be less or equal than uh, the same uh, combination of values at points x1 uh, and till xm. Uh, how uh, one can understand it? Uh, if 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 I 
if I would have only two points, it's uh, pretty understandable. Okay? So, uh, just even example of function one of one variables. Uh, so I have a point x1, sorry, x1, x2. Okay. So and the uh, convex combination is uh, any point in inside, and I know that function. Uh, this is my y. Uh, if I have convex function f, then. Uh, uh, value at y will be less than the uh, value of this linear function which is defined by those two points. And uh, in multi-dimensional case one can also think about linear function of uh, several variables in my picture of two variables uh, its plot is like a plane. Its plane, uh, values of this linear function at given points are the same as uh, values of uh, f. But values of f uh, in the intermediate points are smaller. And the formal proof, uh, if one like to prove this formally, it also goes by induction. For example, if you take uh, only points x1 and x2 and uh, consider uh, uh, values of function along this line, then just by de definition of convex function you will have this inequality. Then you take any point in between and some new point and consider this line then again you return to definition of convex function, so on, and uh, this gives you a systematic way to prove this by induction. By induction. And uh, inequality is really useful in many, many, many cases. Just as uh, one example, uh, arithmetic geometric mean inequality, well known, that uh, arithmetic mean of number of, of several numbers is greater or equal than geometric mean. Uh, one can prove it using Janssen inequality and I leave it for your home consideration. And uh, my hint is uh, use convex function minus log. Take minus log of both sides and uh, see what happens. So this is uh, this is home for home. Uh, now we will look a bit uh, more carefully on derivatives of uh, convex functions in the cases when they have derivatives and they are smooth or even twice differentiable. And the uh, first important, uh, very important inequality is gradient inequality. <coughs> and uh, in, it says a very simple uh, geometrical fact that the uh, graph of uh, convex function is uh, above of uh, touching uh, tangent plane. So if, if we are in the point X, we can build a linear expansion of our function. It will be f of X plus uh, d transpose gradient f of X. If you like to consider f at the point X plus d. So, and gradient inequality says that uh, this uh, expansion, uh, let me write it, it's linear expansion. The 
linear expansion of uh, f at point x is uh, less or equal than f itself. Now, if we have a uh, second derivatives, the picture is even uh, richer. Uh, let's consider first the uh, function of one variable that uh, many of you probably know uh, that if function of one variable is convex then its second derivative just greater or equal to zero how can we uh, see it geometrically so uh, the slope should uh, increase when I in increase the r argument you see the tangent line has less smaller slope or even negative uh, at when t is less than t1 is less than t2 then slope is less uh, uh, at t1 than slope at t2 and this is possible only and and th this is right for any par pairs of points and this is possible e e only if slope is increasing I mean uh, second derivative is non-negative <coughs> uh, what do we have in multi-dimensional case uh, second derivative is Hessian matrix is a matrix uh, here number was uh, non-negative and the uh, matrix is uh, matrix of Hessian should be positive semi-definite uh, and one can show it in very short way uh, so uh, convex function should be convex along uh, any line any straight line and uh, let's uh, write down this uh, e expression for this one dimensional uh, function along line uh, this is like uh, f of x plus uh, alpha r r is direction of this line and alpha is uh, scalar so this function must be convex it's by property that we learned already this means that the uh, second derivative of phi of alpha should be greater or equal to zero second derivative of this scalar function and, but uh, we learned already what is the second this is second deri uh, directional derivative when alpha is zero <coughs> and we already learned that this is just r transpose multiplied by Hessian matrix by r should be greater or equal zero for any direction r and this is exactly definition of positive semi-definite matrix matrix is positive semi-definite if for any r this uh, quadratic form is greater or equal to zero then I conclude that uh, my Hessian matrix is uh, positive semi-definite and uh, actually one can show that it is positive definite if uh, my function is strictly convex so I, I just will add positive definite for strictly convex function. <coughs>